Good morning. Home Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Did you guys introduce yourselves? Go ahead. I'm Craig. I'm Megan. And I'm Kevin. And we have a drummer that's not not present with us today. He missed. He's here in spirit. He's here yes. in spirit. Yes. <laughs> he missed the bus back in Georgia. So. <laughs> Drummers, man. I know it. Tell me about it. it it's always. <laughs> so our apologies, because um, he's not here to defend himself. So it's we'll, true. We'll be nice. We it's true. You guys are here this week talking about "She Loves to Ride." Yes, ma'am. Your new song, and I'm looking at these chart numbers, and I'm like, damn, that is pretty amazing. No, that's really. Good. This is hard. Like it's Thank not you. easy to get on indicator. It's not easy to get on music world, which you know because you're doing all the work. I do. <laughs> right. So let's start with the song itself. Let's talk about that. Cool. Uh, that's all, that's actually a song that we we wrote. Uh, Jason and I, the drummer, is not here today. Uh, we wrote this no, song. So you wrote it all by yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote that song it, so. uh, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we we do a lot of our own writing. Uh, actually, most of most of actually every song on this album was was written by the band, and uh, J- this is one that Jason and I penned. And um, my wife back at home, she uh, I, I tease her a lot. She. She takes a long time to get ready to go on a date. She she's one of these. It's got everything's got to be perfect. Her hair's got to be done just right, makeup just right, the perfect yeah. outfit to go out on the town. But uh, every now and then she wants you know cut off jeans, throw on a t-shirt, let her hair down, no makeup, jump in the truck, you know, roll the windows down, that kind of that kind of stuff, and uh, just go for for a drive. And uh, that's where she loves to ride come from. So definitely you know a personal personal experience in my life. So. Yeah, and that's a good thing because that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Is that idea of showing up and being seen for who you are, so showing something that's that's of yourself. Right. Um, when you, you, know, you write the song and you've recorded it and you've got the final mix and you have the artwork and it's ready to go and you know it's, you know, it's going to hit iTunes at midnight, um, how do you feel? What's going on? How do you guys feel? I feel very, very excited. Um, anytime that it's, it's almost like I don't know this this rush of adrenaline for me. Um, anytime that you know that I'm very passionate about something, and you know, especially that song because it, it it you know hits personally with me. Uh, uh, you know, touching on my experiences in life. Um, anytime that you know we're throwing out there. You know that kind of vulnerable, vulnerable experience. It's it's definitely an exciting thing for me to see how you know everybody's going to react. Yeah, especially this album. You know the the previous EP we put it out back in 2012. You know it was kind of we came up here in Nashville. We had some good songs, but it was you know we got in the studio, hired some musicians out, and they cut it, and we were done. And you know quick turnaround. You know cookie cutter type. You know first EP. And uh, so this album, you know, we took a year, a solid year, you know, putting this thing together. Um, so, so definitely when you release that one, you're kind of like, oh, it's excitement and you're nervous <laughs> and I mean, all of it combined, you know. Yeah. And when you say nervous, what, what are you nervous about? Like, what's that? Um, yeah, I mean. Because I, yeah. I often think, like, is it, you know, the, the classic and I'm sure people are going to like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what you want. Yeah. You know, you're, yeah. But you can't make something to please everyone. Either. Right, exactly. And I think, yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, obviously, yes, you are nervous that, you know, are people going to be receptive to it? Are they going to like it? Are they going to dig it? Are they going to, you know, come back and want to want to hear more songs? Or, Y'all spent a whole year on that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff. But, oh, um, like the yeah. <laughs> what? But I, I think that's the, the cool thing about this album. At the end of the day, like we poured our heart and soul and spent, like you said, an entire year recording this album as songs that we've been we've been writing for the past several years, and uh, you know, pretty much laid it all on the table. And um, you know, something that we're very very proud of, very passionate about, and I don't care what anybody says. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of deal. So I, I think there's definitely that 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 proud moment, that excitement. And, uh, that's yeah, and I think coming from a female's perspective, there's almost like a motherly instinct about it, kind of thing. That sounds really weird, but it's like a, it's like a, it's like it's our baby, like. Yeah. And I'm so in a way, it's a nervous kind of protective for me, I guess, kind of you know like, oh okay, <laughs> like what are, like again, what are people gonna think? But also knowing that like these are stories from our hearts because we wrote every song on the album. Like these are songs from personal experiences and things we've been through. And there's a nervousness in thinking that people could criticize that, but it's also an excitement to think that, you know, for anyone that could criticize it, there could be people that love it and could take right. away something so, immensely from it. So, yeah, that's what I feel that, about it. That idea that being creative means being vulnerable, which means doing exactly. it anyway, is, is courageous and is, is being brave in life. 
How do you guys handle it? Um, I, I think that. I mean, obviously, you're gonna get. You're probably gonna get some negative, negative feedback. So I mean, you can't please everybody, like you say. And uh, just, just to be able to, I guess, just move past that, you know, and take that, that criticism as constructive criticism, and try to build off of that, and uh, to to realize that, you know, at the end of the day, like this is me. Like it, it doesn't really matter, you know, how they feel about it, you know, because this is something that's very special to me, and uh, hits close to home, and you know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't feel like I need to change that. Yeah, and kind of disconnect the if there is criticism, because not every criticism is constructive. Right. So, and yes. Yeah. You know, YouTube. Unfortunately. Oh yes. Yeah. So We've had a few of those. How do so. you guys filter the feedback? Like, because like you need to. You can't take everything in, but you need to keep the real constructive criticism. Yeah. You guys have surrounded yourselves with really great people who come with an insane amount of experience. So if right. says something, that's always worth listening. Yeah. So Absolutely. he's on the list. Yeah. But who, who are the other people that you say, you know, those are people that, yeah, they get, that's constructive criticism. These are, you know, we'll just file them away. <laughs> like how, how do you explain it's it's hard to judge that. Um, I, I mean, merit is is, is definitely a, a huge a huge factor there. Um, you know, if it's just Joe Blow on on YouTube, you know, telling you that he hates your outfit and that song is terrible. Um, you know, obviously we don't put a whole lot of weight into that. Um, I go buy a whole new wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to try to you know want to defend yourself and you know and fire back, but I just you know I try to just shrug those kind of comments off and just think, hey, you know that's it wasn't his you know it wasn't his forte, it wasn't his thing. So, um, you know, let's move on to the next guy. Yeah. And I think for us, it's also um, like people that are like us. I mean, people at home that. You know, blue collar kind of work every day, like how they can relate to this stuff for us. Mm-hmm. We don't necessarily have to have a personal experience with them, but if they can relate to it and get the, what we're trying to portray, then for me, that is validity. Like that validates me more than some person just telling me, like, yeah. oh, hey, you suck. Like, I'm exactly. like okay, that's fine. <laughs> so yeah. you can think what you want, but if the, you know, the audience we're targeting this to, if they can grasp it, that to me means more than some random whatever. So. And the, it's when things happen in this business, they tend to happen quickly. Mm-hmm. But to get to those moments, it's often a long way. Right. Now, how do you guys fight with that need to stay patient? Um, <laughs> that's very tough. Or that is general, that is very tough. It's, um, it, it's one of the hardest. Things to do <laughs> we've been battling that for for a long time. We all work uh, full time jobs. Um, yeah. Uh, our day jobs and uh, so it does get hectic trying to, to balance all that and, and, and to take off to you know like weekdays like this when we, we have to come up to Nashville uh, four and a half hours away from our hometown you know take off from our jobs um, it, it's tough to balance that I don't, I don't know How did we just we're very lucky to have a good support system behind us at home between I mean like their wives and you know my family and stuff I mean just to support us knowing that we wouldn't be doing this if this wasn't our dream and if this wasn't what we wanted like more than anything and for the benefit of them too because they see us happy and pursuing like what we want and really doing something that we've dreamt of doing our whole lives so for that it does get hard to be patient because I feel like you can get at a place of kind of a limbo of like we don't really know where we're at like do we quit our jobs and full, like do this full time or do we it's such a hard place to be but I feel like because we have such a strong support system in our families and in our jobs I mean we're all really lucky to either work for ourselves or work for companies that are really you know yeah cool about that stuff so I think it makes the being patient part a little more tolerable but at least for the time being. So. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> and for me personally like um you know if I'm having a, a day that I feel like you know man I'm just I just don't feel like we're getting anywhere, you know, I feel like, you know, plateauing. I just stop and think about, uh, think about where we come from, you know, our past, um, you know, where was I this time last year? And uh, when you do that, it really puts into, you know, puts into perspective, you know, the success that we have had and, and you know, how blessed we are to, to be where we are. And, uh, and that's, a lot of times that's all the motivation that I need to keep, you know, keep moving forward. So. And when, and I'm kind of looking for a specific example. Um, 
when maybe you didn't stay as patient as you should have been, or you made a decision and six months down the line you're like, yeah, okay, you know, I'll admit that wasn't quite the right thing. Um, what gets you into those situations? Is that is that that impatience? Is that inexperience? Is that listening to the wrong advice? You know, do it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when things don't work out because of a wrong decision, you know, quote unquote wrong. What got you into that situation? Um, I think it's you know just the you, you get it in your blood. I guess you get you just get hooked and just that that need for I guess for success. Um, you know, wanting to want to be successful, want you know, wanting people to, to like your music, want people to hear your music. You know, the quickest, best route to get your music in front of as many people as you possibly can. Um, I think that that's probably gotten us um, not not in trouble, but just you know, we yeah, we might have jumped the gun a few times, you know, so when the, we thought the, we um, weren't the thing that you later had to think about, you know, maybe that wasn't the right thing, was that releasing maybe like picking the wrong song because you were trying to please people or putting something out that wasn't quite finished like what what was it that you later that you guys later talked about together and went that is definitely something that we have um you know we (laughs) we have seen in the past and uh, we're we're definitely getting more mindful of that and definitely getting better about that because you know when we especially when we have a new song and uh you know you you see this song come to life and you you have a demo um you cut a demo of it and get a pretty you know pretty decent you know recording of that and uh, it I guess for me too, I have the ability to hear what the song can be yeah. <laughs> versus what it is at the present time. <laughs> so you know, I'm always the first one to you know to want to release you know demos or you know unfinished yeah. versions of songs, uh, you know, and to get people's feedback. And most of the time, that's not a good idea because the average you know the average yeah, listener, the average person. Listen to a mix sometimes. Right. So if you give people a little bit of an thing, they're like, oh, what is this? exactly. So <laughs> yeah. it's oh, yeah, it's, good. it's hard to find yeah. that. <laughs> find that discretion on when you know when to release things for sure i think that's and i mean i think like the a clear visual you can see is the difference between like we said the ep and the album i mean Mm -hmm. looking at how quickly and just not necessarily rushed i mean maybe but just how you know sped up the process of the ep was which granted it's going to take a shorter amount of time to release an ep than a full length album but i mean we got to looking back on that i think we kind of took it in stride and got to take a whole year to really put our heart and souls into this full length album and you can just tell the difference i mean listening song for song it's just it's a night and day difference and i think for the better because it's us it sounds more like us and more what we wanted in an album so. Yeah, I mean, you get get out what you put into it. True, I guess absolutely. so. Yeah, there, is there is nothing. True. You know, we were completely <laughs> completely happy with our EP that we put out. Um, we had some killer mm-hmm. killer musicians absolutely. on that on that EP, and uh, you know, I, I feel like that was the smart move at that time. But moving forward, um, you know. Yeah, now you moved on to a different. We've program. moved on. Yep. Exactly. We've learned that so patience. We have. That you're yes, we about. have. Yeah. The patience. Well, that one takes. of the things that has come up several times, um, but I, when I work with clients, like this is what we, what we talk about a lot, is we don't like nobody, not me, not anybody in this room. We don't like being uncomfortable. Right. So to get out of discomfort, we'll do the next thing that gets us out of it. And that often is not the right thing. We're, we're like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I, I'm in uncertain. Like, you know, if you don't quite know yet what's going to happen, how fast it's going to happen. You're sitting in uncertainty. You're sitting in discomfort. Somebody comes along and says, yes, I think we should release this song. Yes, yes, sign here. I'm going to do it. Right. Because you want to get out of that space. Does that, you know what I'm talking about? You have that feeling? Uh, we've, we've been there a few times, I guess. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's tough to talk about. It, it is tough to talk about. I mean, because you, you definitely, it's, it's human really nature to want to just, you know, to, to get out of the, that situation as, as quick as you can. But um, I think just to, to take your time to just breathe and just to really think, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to trying to be better about that myself. Yeah. But um, I think we've, we've done a pretty good job at it uh, so far of just, you know, really thinking about because I, I have a business major uh, background. And I actually have a master's in business, so I'm kind of trained to, you know, yeah, to analyze and things. And so, term, yeah, and, and business. If you want everything now, you're right, right, right. And you you've got to have that, you know, that vision of the future, and you know what every step that you take is going to have some effect on you at some point or another. So yeah. to just have that. Uh, that overall vision and that overall direction in the back of your mind as you're moving forward, I think helps you make you know better decisions at the yeah. present time. So. And when you think about that idea of vulnerability, 
and what what's the first thing that you see like in terms of your careers? Where where does vulnerability show up? Where do you feel that? Oh, I th- everybody keeps <laughs> deferring to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, re- to what? Yeah, releasing the album. We we just yeah, recorded a, a music video about three and a half weeks ago. Um, we <laughs> we actually were the, the the main actors and actress in the video, and uh, I think that's definitely a, a vulnerable step for us. Um, you know, because we we kind of we kind of took a risk here with this one uh, for our, for our new single. She loves to ride with this video. Um, we we tried to reach outside the box. And uh, not do your your typical cliche country music video, and uh, I think <laughs> so. Uh, so definitely short range, like you know, in the next few weeks, uh, that's going to definitely be a, a vulnerable moment for us. But we are we are thrilled and excited, and uh, that that adrenaline's already kicking in. I can't wait yeah. to see what happens that, with it. That's that's a good example. Is I mean, we we we're in makeup and costumes, yeah. and, you know, running this full skit out, you know, storyline and. So is it, is it going to be funny to everybody else, or is it just funny because we know yeah. who we are, you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. So we're going to put this out, oh yeah, we've been telling everybody, it's the funniest thing, you know, it's so funny, and they're going to be like, oh, crickets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah no, well, that was weird. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So that's definitely a vulnerable moment for us, and then, um, you know, I think as we move forward in this year, you know, trying to make that transition from full-time jobs to oh crap, this might actually be a career for us, yeah. and uh, you know, provide a living for us, so um, at, at that point, we're, we're all definitely very vulnerable, and not just ourselves personally, but our families, um, yeah. you know, because I, I have a wife at home, Kevin's got a wife at home, and, um, you know, Megan's got family, and, you know, we, we've all got got a lot on the table, so. Yeah, and that's, I think that's one of the, uh, unless, you know, you happen to be very lucky and get this fabulous deal early on, or you get an investor throwing money at you, I think that is a very, very, very hard decision. It is. It is. And uh, we got the, the best support team back at home, we uh, you know, standing yeah. behind us, so oh, yeah. it makes it a lot yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> the, I always end with a much lighter question, um, <laughs> just to kind of, you know, lighten things up a little bit. What's your favorite <laughs> cereal? <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite cereal? Um, if you guys had to put together a soundtrack to your lives, with oh. songs that you grew up with, songs oh. that are important to you, oh my songs that are your friends. I have songs that are like my friends. Yeah. So go hang out with them when I need them. Right. Absolutely. Um, what makes you happy? All right, guys, go ahead and tell them what mine is. <laughs> Alan Jackson. Anything Alan Jackson. Anything Alan Jackson's on Craig's record. That's his whole record. That could be a box set. So yeah, okay. that's extended. <laughs> well, Anything yeah. Alan Jackson. So this is one be is Craig. Alan Jackson. Yeah. I'm a '90s country guy, so definitely Alan Jackson. George Strait is a huge influence in my life. Uh, Garth Brooks. Man, Garth Brooks, The River, The Dance, oh, okay. some of the first songs I learned to play. Yeah. Diamond Rio, you know, the good yeah. harmony, good yeah. harmony stuff. Even like, you know, some of the earlier gospel stuff we, we do, you know, I, I sucker for good harmony, so when you got all no those, those things yeah. happening, you probably, probably see, a, see a good gospel or bluegrass song on my record. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, this is hard. Why are you contributing? I know. Um, I feel like I grew up very much more on the rock side of things. I grew up with a dad that listened to only rock. I mean, when I say rock, I mean like anything from Metallica to like Aerosmith, like all kinds of stuff. And that, I mean, I love country music, but that shaped me and like molded me into like this love of music that I have. There, hey, yeah, that's amazing. And I mean, like I am. It's. I feel like I just. I love all kinds of music. Johnny Cash, anything Johnny Cash. I am obsessed. So gotta have that wild hair. I was gonna say, and then Dolly Parton. I mean, I love Dolly oh. Reba. I love. So it's just. It's so hard for me to pick certain songs because I just. I don't know. I love that sound of just. Yeah. So for me, that'd be it. So. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. <laughs>